Hello everyone and welcome to the 26th episode of Death Row Executions. Today's story is on the life of James Allen Red Dog, who in 1993 was executed by lethal injection in the state of Delaware for murder. Before I begin, I would like to say that when I first looked up James Allen Red Dog, this was the picture that popped up. After I completed my research and went searching for more pictures, I saw this same face attached to articles about a James Allen who killed two different people in a different state. I am not sure if by having the same name confused people, but I want to start off by saying that I am not 100% sure that this James Allen is the actual James Allen Red Dog. The story, however, is accurate, so I hope you enjoy. James Allen Red Dog was born in 1954 at the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. He was a full-blood Native American and was mixed with Assiniboine and Sioux. Contrary to popular belief, the Native Americans do not pronounce it Sioux like most English speakers do, and that pronunciation started out as a derogatory pronunciation towards Native Americans and then became the common way to pronounce it if you were not Native. Also, for anyone who is unfamiliar with Indian reservations, Native Americans born on reservations are still U.S. citizens and are subject to federal, state, and local laws, but if they are on the reservation and commit a crime, only federal and tribal laws apply. James grew up as a member of the Lakota tribe, and his tribe's reservation was stationed in the state of Montana. He grew up with eight sisters and had no role models to look up to. Life on Fort Peck was and is hard for many because the population lived below 200% of the poverty rate and it was also in crisis due to lack of jobs, drugs, as well as sex trafficking. The first major crime James committed was in 1973 at the age of 19 when he was involved in an armed robbery of a liquor and pizza store, leaving the owner dead. The store was located on the reservation and he was subjugated to the tribe's court and jail system. James later said that this is when he first felt that he was prepared to die. He was not sentenced to death for this murder and instead was sentenced to jail. In 1977, after four years of being in jail, he was approved for a furlough to attend a Native American ceremony unescorted. Instead of returning to jail, he went on the run with a friend and they traveled all the way to Los Angeles, California. The night they arrived in Los Angeles, James and his friend went to a bar and met two Native American men who offered their home for the night. When the two Native American men fell asleep, James and his friends stabbed them to death. He was arrested, pled guilty to two counts of second-degree murder, and was convicted, but somehow was able to get a sentence concurrent with his armed robbery sentence and had to spend no extra time in prison for the actual murders. In the 80s, James traveled to Illinois but was soon sent to prison after his arrival. While in prison, he gave another inmate heroin so that he could kill a prison gang member who had been harassing a few inmates. He escaped prison, was caught, and later was released on parole. After being released in 1988, he moved to Delaware and was placed in the Federal Witness Protection Program because of his role in helping the government learn about prison gangs and the militant American Indian movement. He was also teaching secret and ceremonial Sioux traditions to the Nanticoke Indians of Delaware. He was now living in a nice home and even married a woman by the name of Bonnie Red Dog. The couple lived near 52-year-old Joanna Stewart and her 30-year-old roommate Hugh Pennington. Bonnie and Hugh were close friends and worked together at the local Tally Ho Motor Lodge. On February 9, 1991, James had gone bowling with a friend and spent the night drinking and swooning over multiple women. He failed to pick up any women he had attempted to hook up with, and being that it was very late in the evening, he and his friend decided to part ways. Instead of going home, James, still very drunk, went to his neighbor Joanna's house and started banging on the door. Hugh Pennington answered the door, and James forced himself inside while demanding Hugh to give him all of his money. Hugh had nothing, so James decided to force Hugh downstairs into the cellar. James was 6 feet 5 inches tall, 240 pounds, and was easily able to overpower Hugh. He then took all of Hugh's clothes off, leaving only his underwear on, and tied him up with duct tape. James found a hunting knife in the cellar and used it to slice Hugh's neck so bad to where he was almost decapitated. He was left there to die in his own pool of blood. After killing James, he left for his house only to find out that Joanna was there watching movies with his wife Bonnie. When Joanna was ready to leave, James told her that he had something very important to talk about with her, and she told him that he can accompany her on the car ride home. After making it back to the house he had just murdered Hugh in, 
When he and Joanna made it inside, James forced Joanna to her bedroom and raped her multiple times that night and then passed out on the bed. Joanna was too afraid to leave, so she stayed there in the bed next to him. Early next morning when James woke up, he sodomized her with an object and raped her again. After this second assault on Joanna, he forced her to drive him to a deserted farmhouse in Orchard Oak, Delaware. The pair made it to the abandoned house and James raped her again. After that assault, he forced Joanna to take him to his friend's house and once they arrived, James went inside leaving Joanna alone for the first time. She used that as an opportunity to escape and drove to her house only to find that the police were there. At around 7 o'clock that morning before Joanna drove James to the abandoned farmhouse, she called her boss Robert Bray's phone but his wife Sandra answered. Joanna repeated multiple times that she would not be coming into work that day because of an illness and hung up the phone. Sandra relayed the information to her husband and thought that the call was strange, not only because she had never missed a day of work in her years of working for Robert, but she was not even scheduled to work that day. Sandra and Robert did not believe Joanna was sick, so they got in their car and drove to her house. By the time they arrived at the house, Joanna and James had already left the abandoned farmhouse. They went inside the home and they noticed that Joanna was not home and her car was not there. They were also unable to locate Hugh even though his car was parked in the driveway. Finally, the couple went to the cellar and that is when they saw Hugh lying dead so they immediately called 911. Delaware State Police arrived to the scene and in charge of the investigation was Sergeant Mark Daniels. Before Joanna made it back to her house, Bonnie Red Dog made her way over to Joanna's house and questioned Sergeant Daniels about what was going on. He began to question Bonnie and she told him that her husband had not come home after leaving with Joanna the night before. What made Sergeant Daniels question James as being the main suspect of the murder was that Bonnie divulged information that James had been in and out of prison for his whole life and that her husband was a convicted killer. Shortly after that interaction, that is when Joanna arrived and told police that James had sodomized and raped her. She then learned that her roommate Hugh was dead as well. Later, after examining the bloody fingerprints left behind, they concluded that they matched the fingerprints of James. The police were now on a manhunt to find James and he was found later that day walking over the Winchester Bridge in Wilmington. A policeman asked for his name and he replied by saying, Jim Red Dog. James was arrested that same day and sent to prison. The following year, in 1992, his trial began. Sergeant Mark Daniels attended the trial and it was reported that every time James walked past him, he would make derogatory statements towards him. James pled guilty and said he wanted to die. He was ultimately convicted on April 15, 1992 for the crimes against Joanna Stewart and received 80 years for that, and for the murder of Hugh Pennington, he received death by method of lethal injection. He refused any appeals, stating that it went against his warrior code. His lawyers tried to request court orders for psych evaluations, but Judge Norman A. Barron went on record and said, There is no substantial showing that Red Dog is currently incompetent, and the Delaware Superior Court would respect James's rationally based wishes. His sisters said that they were proud of him for giving his life since he took a life away, and said that everyone should be happy he is choosing to die instead of sit in prison wasting taxpayers' money. While on death row, James sent a request to expedite his execution for his family and the victim's family. Initially, the execution was set for July of 1933 after it was ordered by Judge Barron, but in the state of Delaware, the death sentence is automatically appealed to the state Supreme Court, so his decision was not upheld, meaning supported or confirmed, until November 1992. After the Delaware Supreme Court upheld Judge Barron's decision in November, they rescheduled James's execution for March 3, 1993. For James's last meal, he was able to get shrimp, crabs, and lobster all from a restaurant close to the prison called Bailey's. As he was eating his last meal, his lawyer Eddie Penkowski was there and decided to help himself with some of the food that James had ordered and was sitting right there in front of them both. Eddie then reached for a lobster tail and James stabbed his hand with a plastic fork he was using to eat and said, Eddie, I'm a rapist and a five-time killer and a Sioux without a soul. If you pick up another piece of my final meal, I will tear your heart out with my bare hands. Eddie laughed it off but did not take another bite. After James consumed all of his food, he was then led to the execution chamber. 
Before execution day, James requested for a tribal medicine man by the name of John Morset to be there for his execution, and prison officials agreed, although they were hesitant at first because they usually only allow prison chaplains to be in the execution chamber. James said that he had met John about 10 years prior, but John had no memory of who James was but agreed to be there for his execution. After being strapped in, John performed Native American rites over James for about two minutes and then put a necklace over his head. After John was complete with his ceremony, James said his final words. I'd like to thank my wife Bonnie, my family and friends, and my lawyer Penkowski for supporting me, and all the others who treated me with kindness. The rest of you can kiss my... As the drugs were entering his body and he began choking, his final words were, I'm going home, babe. On March 3, 1993, James Allen Red Dog died by method of lethal injection at the State Correctional Center in Smyrna, Delaware. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen and watch this story. Please give it a like if you enjoyed. And I would also like to give a big shout out to Michael for becoming a patron on my Patreon. Thank you so much for the support. And now for discussion and question time. So here on YouTube, I've seen a couple that is married and the husband admits that he is a sociopath. And no, he does not call it antisocial personality disorder, although that is his diagnosis. He does not feel love the way he understands other people feel it. And the two have a child together. Their goal is to spread awareness and show that not all people with that diagnosis are crazy killers. I believe James suffered from this in a way and I'm shocked as to how his wife stayed with him. That night, he was attempting to cheat on her. He left with the neighbor while he was drunk and did not return. She didn't call her husband, he didn't call her, and when she woke up the next morning, it seemed like she felt that everything was normal and she still stuck by James's side until execution day. Do you think it would be hard for you to stay in a relationship with someone who is incapable of feeling love for you? They like you as a person and are content with you as a person, but can't feel empathy when you cry or feel hurt by something. Everything is learned. So like an act of giving you flowers is not because he wants to genuinely make you happy, but because it's learned that women like flowers and you might be happy. I hope that makes sense. And it's not someone who can share the same happiness with you, the same joy as you. And I think that would be something very difficult to do. I feel it's the same as someone who can feel emotions, but just being a deceitful person and doing things behind your back. And it's not genuine at all. Also, do any of you think that you would be capable of being intimate with a person who was a killer and a rapist? Bonnie had no care about his murderous criminal past. So I'm wondering, would some of you guys be able to look past that? Thank you to anyone who does end up answering any of these questions in the comments below. And now I would like to share some thoughtful comments, kind comments, and some thought-provoking comments.